Apologise in advance for the weather. We've got a few pitter patter raindrops on the roof here in the workshop. We're going to continue on in this video about the two plate method. We've looked in previous videos about having a one way lighting circuit controlling two LED downlighters using the two plate method, a method where the feed is taken directly to the light switch and the switching line of neutral goes out to the loads. We then went on in a second video and extended that through to what we've got here, which is a two way switch and a two way switch. So two way control of our LED down lights, again, using the two plate method. So to finish the series of videos off, we're going to introduce a third switch. So we're going to have a two way switch here, an intermediate switch, which we're going to introduce in this video, and then another two way switch here. So we've got the two plate method controlling the LED down lighters, but this time two way and intermediate switch. So bring the camera in, I'm going to introduce a new piece of cable between these two switches, which is three core. I understand in the real world that this three core and CPC cable that we introduced here would be going through walls, under floors and in ceilings and etc. So obviously it's an easy route for me. However, the connections in the back of the intermediate switch, which will go here. And when we put the two way switch over here will be identical on this rig as they would be in the real world. Let's bring the camera in. So let's just have a quick recap at switch number one. In the first video we did, this was our one-way switch and we converted it in our second video to go to two-way. So let's have a look at what this one looks like. This will not be affected by what we're gonna do now when we introduce our intermediate switch. So our supply comes down, brings in our permanent line connection and neutral, which goes into a Vargo connector. We've got our switching line and neutral going out. And we take those two brown conductors, one that's permanent line and one that's switching line, and put them in either L1 or L2, it doesn't matter which way around they go. So the permanent line could come same to L1, the switching line going out to the lights could go into L2. We introduce a three core then to our second switch to make it two wade. And again, in that cable, the only crucial conductor was to make sure the black one for me goes into the common terminal. We're left then in that three core cable with a brown conductor and a gray conductor identified with brown sleeving, and they go in L1 and L2. Again, it doesn't matter which way around they go. So the only crucial one then for three core was the black into common. All my CPCs are connected into the back of the insulated box onto the earth terminal, just in case either the back box or the front plate are turned into metal. Therefore, they become an exposed conductive part and would need to be connected to the CPC. Let's look at the two way switch in which we're going to change to an intermediate switch next before we introduce a new switch on the end. So my three core now coming into this switch was when I two weighed it, the three core coming in, the only crucial conductor again is the black conductor, again the black one identified with brown sleeving, goes into the common terminal, and then we've got the brown and the grey, grey again identified with brown sleeving, goes in L1 and L2 and it doesn't matter which way around they're going in. That was what we had when we had the two way. We're going to take this switch off now and introduce a new switch. We're going to introduce an intermediate switch. It is one gang, so there's only one more switch on it, and we've got four terminations in the back. So we've got two at the top, two at the bottom, and they've labeled them L1, L1, and L2, and L2. And what's gonna happen is, the cable coming in here, we're gonna use two conductors. We're gonna use the brown and the gray to go into our intermediate switch, and we're gonna use the new introduced cable. We're gonna use the brown and the gray of this cable also to be connected into the intermediate switch meaning the black conductor will need to be connected. In this case, we're going to put it into a Vargo connector and left in the back of the actual accessory here in the back of the box. So we're going to concentrate next on the three core, brown and gray, and the three core, brown and gray, and the in order to connect it into our intermediate switch. So first of all, I'm going to remove this two way switch. Obviously we're fully isolated, etc. This is a training rig. So we're going to take this off. I'm going to use that in the position three. So it's going over there in a minute. So if we drop out the conductors here, like so, we've got rid of our two way switch. So our two way switch is now gone. And like I said, we're going to introduce an intermediate switch. I've already backed off the screws. We're gonna have a brown and gray going in the top, maybe from this side, it doesn't matter, and a brown and gray going out the bottom. It doesn't matter if we go brown, gray, brown, gray, but what it does matter is that a cable set of brown and gray either go in the top two or the bottom two. If my learners make a mistake, they bring the brown and gray of one set across the side. It needs to be in the top for this make and in the bottom as well. So we'll have one set, brown and gray in the bottom, one set brown and gray in the top. So let's do that bit next. 
So all my ends are terminated, ready to go. I just need to introduce some more brown sleeving on the black conductor to identify it as a switching line conductor. And also onto the gray as well. So I've identified them with the appropriate amount of sleeving. And now we're gonna do is get rid of some of these conductors. So I'm gonna start off by doing the blacks. So the blacks that were in the common in the previous switching arrangement are gonna be now connected into a maintenance free connector. I have on the channel got some wiring diagrams where I explain the connections inside here and what is happening. Just snip these off, they were doubled over. I'll get them down to approximately 11 mil. You don't see that very often, do you? Gary stripping without a knife. There will be comments. Okay, so I've stripped those back. I now find my Vargo connector, open up the levers push in my connections like so, and I can introduce that into the back of the box. Give them a tug, okay, they're in a good place. So we've got those ones now that we can sit out of the way, and then we'll concentrate maybe on the CPC next. Let's get rid of the CPC. I've already terminated the end. It can go into the same terminal. So we can undo that. Trying to stay out of the way of the tripod, never easy. Never thought I'd be saying that. CPC connection goes in, and we can tighten that one off. Okay, so my CPC's in as well. I'll have a play around with these in a minute, try and make them a, a little bit neater uh, in order that we can get them in. So we're looking at the termination conductors now. So we've got a set here, we've got brown and gray from this side, and we've got a brown and gray from that side. As I said to you, we're gonna put a set in the top and a set in the bottom. So get rid of our two-way switch introduce an intermediate switch now so i set in the top so i'm just going to pop doesn't matter which way around they go so i'll put a gray one and a brown one from one set in the top like so and likewise at the bottom so there we go one set in the top what generally happens is you still put brown opposite brown and gray opposite gray. It's not the end of the world if you don't, but we tend to, we like to, to keep those sort of things rhythmical. So we go in again. This is more tricky now the tripod's in the way. Connect that one in and connect my last gray one in. And I've introduced now an intermediate switch. You can have as many intermediate switches as you like in circuit. As long as at one end you have a two-way switch and at the other end you have a two-way switch, you can have as many of these as you want in circuit. So let's have a quick look at what we've done here then. So I've introduced our intermediate switch. We've got a brown and gray and a brown and gray from one set, a brown and gray and brown and gray from another set in the intermediate switch, a set in the top and a set in the bottom. We've put our black switching line, which was our common terminations before, into a maintenance-free Vargo connector. And we've connected our CPCs together in the back of the box because it's fully insulated. We can now go on and connect the three core, which goes that way, into another position, which will be a two-way switch next. Okay, so this is the three core now, which has been newly introduced to point three, even though that was the point where we had the new switch. This switch will be the two-way switch that was originally here. So we have a two-way switch here. So as before, let's get rid of the CPC into the back of the box itself. Again, trying to work around the tripod. Never taught me that when I was training. Can you do an electrical installation working around a tripod? So that one's secured in the back of the box. We now got our conductors to be identified. So we need to identify the gray and black conductor. So if we put the brown sleeve in onto the gray, and brown sleeve in onto the black. And then we've got to connect this up. So we get our one gang two-way switch. We've got common L1 and L2, and we're gonna put the black one in the common, and it doesn't matter which one goes L1 and L2, whether it be brown or gray, it doesn't matter what we did over at the other switch. So don't go over there and look what you've done there. It doesn't really matter where they go. So black's the important one. Black goes into common. I've already doubled these ends over off camera. You've seen me do that enough times on camera. So connect that one up like so. So black's in common and then pop our other two conductors in. Grey, a brown conductor in as well. And then we've added that extra switch on. So there we go. We've got black identified with brown sleeve and going in common. 
the grey identified with brown sleeving and the brown conductor from the three core coming into the top. Could be the bottom, you could turn the switch around, people say, well, it could be the other way around, it could be the other way around. It's actually the common that's important in this case, common being black, and of course we've secured our CPC into position. So what we've done now is we've shown the two plate method and we've now got two way and intermediate switching connected up. So there we have it, we've introduced a, another switch. So we've now got two way and intermediate switching using the two plate method. And in this case, we've got a couple of LED down lighters and we've shown all of these stages through a set of videos on the channel. So I'm hoping there being some help. I'd like to think as um, different syllabuses develop, maybe they'll introduce both the standard three plate method, which often colleges do, but also introduce this two plate method, which is generally used in industry and domestic dwellings where we have large numbers of down lighters. So let's just talk through it again. The feed came into switch number one, bringing a line neutral and CPC. We took the neutrals and put them into a maintenance free connector. The cable going out to the light took out the neutral, a CPC, and a switching line. We went through the switching sequences described in here. The most important connection for me is that I always use black as my common, and we make sure that we get our three core and our effectively the two brown conductors split appropriately in the first switch, and we go through as we go. The mistake my learners will make on the intermediate switch is say a set of two here, brown and gray, they'll put them across the sides instead of actually putting them into the top and another set into the bottom. And then for when we do our testing, the sequence doesn't quite work out uh, as it should do. And this may be something that we can pick up in maybe a fault finding video where you've got incorrect connection of an intermediate switch. I might make a decent video of that. So we're almost at the end of the series on the two plate method. I may, but not necessarily, I may go on and test this um, installation for continuity CPC polarity and insulation resistance. I'll see how I go. But I think the fault finding one might be worth picking up.